there, but you know, these people probably. Well, well, I mean, those, those kinds of things do happen, they though. They do, I know, but and I mean, this is. When, when, I just think this is when, really when the populace wants rise away for roads and other utilities and infrastructure. <laughs> Well, and part of and part of some of the issues we're going to deal with is the simple fact that oh, that the city <laughs> made the mistake of, of of allowing structures to be built okay. in these same right. easement areas right. Right. without right. you know oh well, there's plenty of room over here so you guys go ahead and build no I mean there's no indication why they were allowed to do to do it they were given a permit they were allowed to do it. And now ITC comes through and says, well, that's not an issue to us because garages don't grow. <coughs> so what? We can we can drive right here, which is unfortunately now one property owner takes the brunt of you know the, the right. trespass so yeah. yep. so. yeah. What's the difference between this and um, the use of uh, of personal or of, of personal property? repair a water line or a uh, sewer line. Again, that's the same type of thing. It's called any thing. It yeah. gives us rights to go in and exactly. make these repairs. Sure. I mean, it's, it's nothing that... So not it's just the idea that, that there is something really weird about this or it, it is no more taking than a broken water main that... Uh, uh, that and, and in Taylor, I'm pretty sure that you could find places where uh, water mains Mains were running across farmland. Well, there's a difference between maintenance and something that's actually. Well, I'm not broken. talking about maintenance, I'm talking about. Maintenance. All right, let's take a sewer then. Where, if it's sewer is maintenance, sewer the city has right. a right to the property. Exactly. The property owner has a right to challenge it, I suppose. If the property is going to be disturbed, the property owner has a right to seek compensation. It would right. be interesting to know whether that compensation was in the form of return to original uh, uh, condition or cash. Well, I think that I think that the little bit of difference that's here is that we're talking about a a, a, a line in space from the ground up, so 30 feet easement, whatever it is, from the power line to a space. Now, ITC and their contract company that comes in and does the trimming looks up and gauges. You know, okay, this tree is going to grow into that space. Exactly. Let's cut it here. And, you know, you're, so they're they're passing judgment as to how far they should go back because it, it might, within the next time they do their service line, grow into that space. Versus, you know, there's no. And the possibility is that that tree that doesn't get cut today represents a severe liability if it actually bumps into a big. Uh, a service line and somebody gets electrocuted on the ground. Right. In some cases, they pass a judgment that, you know, something might happen, this tree could explode and branches could fly 100 feet away and land up, you know, 10, you know, and the more 50 more feet up and into the power lines. And, and the more often you have to trim the tree, it ups your costs. So when you're coming through and cutting, you want to do it for a reasonable period of time. That makes sense. Do you think the contract company would trim as little as possible? Uh, well, it depends on the scope of work, I suppose. Manager, yeah. uh, two weeks ago, the folks from the Trade Center and Wade Shows were here um, about the carnival, and I think they went to ARC this week. There's some update, because I know that they're here, and I'm sure that uh, they're interested. Is yeah. there, oh, I received oh, a question. The, the Wade Shows and carnival. Oh. I received an email from um, Ms. Hardesty that was here at the meeting last mm -hmm. meeting. Um, whether we'd be on the council item. I hadn't seen anything different from their application because it was submitted after that point in time. So for the clerk's office, it's 30 days for planning. But well, well, I don't think it was outside of that as well, right? Well, we hadn't submitted anything at that point in time. But it was on the agenda. No. It no. wasn't on the agenda? Okay, so did it go to ARC this week or did it not? Yes. Okay. And what was the outcome of ARC? Approved. Approved? Regarding security, there was some question regarding security. Chief. They got security scope, which she asked me about. Okay. That's the tip of the issue on my most of those security measures. Yeah. So, so I guess going back to that, my issue last week was that 
you know, I, I didn't see, I, I didn't think that I could blindly approve it without ARC approval, but now that ARC's approved it, and it sounds like everything's in line, is there a reason that it can't be considered tomorrow? There's an administrative process, so if the clerk's throwing away your administrative process for 30 days, and you want the planning department to throw away their 21 days to do it, and, and hope well, you fingers crossed it. I don't know that I want to do any of that, I just want to try to work. Well, they're, they're not going to have, have council approval till, you know, let's assume they have council approval tomorrow night, and then tomorrow night that gets that, then uh, you would expect the building department to schedule uh, an inspection on that on Wednesday with one day of work to do so. I mean, they're already booked, so it's... Is it not possible? That's what I'm asking you. It does appear so based on Jamie's look at the calendar. I mean, they're going to ask you. What if they pushed it back another day? Is that an option? And I, I'm, I'm getting July 4th, so they get a holiday and you're paying holiday day or, you know, nobody's here. So, so the issue is, is the, there's that, it's the inspections that they can't get on? That's one of the issues I mean, at this point because they're not on inspections they haven't submitted for inspection because there's no council approval. That usually doesn't happen until we get council approval again. Okay, the, what was the, what was the issue with the clerk's office? That one was the, the 30 30 30 30. Do you have an issue with that? I don't want to start a precedent. Mm -hmm. With the, you know, submitting at the last minute, that's the only problem. That is the only issue. Right. So do it for this one tomorrow. Yeah, and we're, we're going to do one for next one. Something special week. from the last one. Week. I mean, we, we. No, but they had already gone through their whole process. It's just right. ARC process. Right. 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 And that that is not the difference. Indeed. It didn't make it on the agenda though, and, and they had the ARC. It's not the same. Well, let's hopefully go back. I mean, my recommendation at that study session was that we didn't take it for you know, because they hadn't been through and they had done business in city of Taylor before, so they should have known they needed to pull all those permits. Back in the, I think the lady was there and said, this is the first time I just the paperwork, so it's my mistake. You know, I'm mm -hmm. okay with it. Doesn't, I mean, everybody stops and jumps through, changes all of the inspection schedules to make that work because it goes through. I mean, we benefit, I mean, you know, I guess we have to weigh exactly what we benefit as a community from, you know, continued carnivals. I think uh, what Laura's working on right now is looking at the um, looking at the law, looking at the uh, um, fee schedule as to you know how we adjust that because we think that there, that's probably a part of the reason why in most a lot of communities have, have jacked their fee schedule to be fifteen hundred dollars or something to that effect for to kind of come through this process to get you know, carnival permits versus what we one hundred fifty dollars or whatever it is we charge for that process. I think so, it's four hundred dollars, and that's probably. You know, each carnival I know, now that it's on my name, pretty place that into mm -hmm. my time. Yeah, and, you know, maybe maybe they're too low. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know what the comparables are. I don't know what other people are, or what other communities are charging. Um, you know, my concern is just that that if there's an opportunity, I mean, they are a significant taxpayer in the community. And is there something that we can do to, to try to assist them? You know, in this opportunity where it became available. Um, you know, if it's, if it's simply impossible, then I guess I understand. But, you know, I don't know what their workload is in the building department. I suspect this is probably the same floor plan as they have every other carnival. Still got to go do inspect all the equipment, inspect all the setup. And, I mean, you know, I know, only know from Jamie this morning that, you know, I asked her last week to check on what her schedule uh, was for that day, for Tuesday, um, Wednesday. And that's weird. So Wednesday. And I know she had a call in, at least one call in today from the inspector, so I don't know how that pushes everything back to what done today into regular therapy or the board. It's a amount of time that needs to be done. I'm going to reach out and send it out an email. I didn't get a response to the first email. I sent my email out today, which is you know, really seen a difference in the process. So neither of the time frames have been met. It's sending out an email with Laura and Jamie. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, <clears throat> recently, we were approached by the state of Michigan Transportation Department. They have told us that they want to put in crossing lines for the railroad crossing against the barrier and backhoe. There's two sets of tracks. Mm -hmm. and they're they're going to put in crossing lines for the Sorry, 
are going to Superior Rifle, you mean in the south of Eureka? North of Eureka, right? No, it's, it's I think. Superior is north of Eureka. No, but there's no traffic in Superior, is there? Well, yeah. yeah, there is. Superior, it goes right behind my neighborhood. know here is the state has come in and asked us um, to go in with them here um, and it's really quite impressive how they do it. The fact of the matter is we don't have to take anything. Said, if you'd like you to do this, we've got all the funds. We're going to pay for everything. The only thing that the city will be on the hook for, if you will, is, and I believe it's yearly, we're going to have to pay a maintenance fee of like $1,200. Um, a year? That's correct. And then what they told us was, you don't have to uh, accept you know, our, our offer to do this for you and split the cost. But the downside is if we don't, they come in, they do it anyway, and then they get the half the money from us. So we had to fill out an application. We filled out an application requesting these funds. Got notification today from the state. I can't think of this guy's name. But anyways, they, they're going to make the funds available. I mean, I just would like to run this by council because, again, there's going to be a cost down the road for maintenance. But, again, that's all by statute. We really don't have a say, yay or nay. Where do those funds come out of, the, the maintenance? It's a budgeted item through uh, Act 51. Okay. And like I said, the other railroad crossings that we 